Thank you, my Father, my God. Thank you, my wonderful Savior. All the dirt is to be back to your house, Father God, on this Sunday, Father God. Never mind the winds, never mind the weather, but we are in the comfort of your of the Holy Spirit as we assemble in this fellowship. Thank you. We are under this great blanket of your comfort, Holy Spirit. We thank you for, for today. Thank you for the service so far. So many testimonies. You know, some, we're just laughing. We're just enjoying the Holy Spirit. The, the things he's been doing for us through the week, we just thank you. I said it, Father God, that this year, every Sunday is going to be Testimony Sunday because you are doing so much for us. So we must come back to thank you and to share how good you've been to us. Always been good to us. Thank you also, Father God, for the first time this year, 2024, we broke bread the communion Sunday. Lord, we are grateful that we are one with you in body, in, 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 in the flesh and in the, and, and in the blood. We partook of it to show that we are one with you. So let the heavens know, let the earth know, let those beneath the earth know that we are one with you because we've partaken and we continue to partake of your body, the flesh, and of your blood, the cup. Thank you, Daddy, for everything. Even as we come, Father God, to hear your word. The word is blessing will do us good. Speak to us, Holy Father. Our hearts are prepared, our ears are open, Father God, to hear you. A word in season. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for everything. We hallow your name. God, we honor you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. A very good afternoon to you, wherever you are. We greet you in the name of the Lord from the hills and valleys of Kent. And we are based in England. The Lord bless you richly. Thank you for joining with us today. I'm so glad that you are here with us. Those who are connected locally, the Lord in England, those of you connected from abroad, whatever you are, whatever continent, whatever whatever culture you are, we ask the Lord to bless you and to minister to that. This world that you hear today will do you good in Jesus' name. Thank you for connected with us and staying with us in this ministry. As God does things for us, he will also do for you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. We bless God for your life. By the grace of God, I want to conclude that which we began to teach last Sunday on moving forward with 2024, your new year and my new year. The year will be nothing. It will come and go. If we don't do concrete things, things of substance, make decisions to make the year count for us. We need to let go of the so-called failures and the disappointments and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the things that didn't go well last year, 2023, is history now. So let the past be past. You and I need to move forward with our lives in this new season. And I believe brings us new opportunities. So we began last Sunday talking on moving forward with our 2024. This is part number two. It's a new year. Well, today is 21st of January now. The year is getting old. By next weekend, it will be the last weekend in January, and then we will move into February, January gone until 2025. So as they say, time waits for no one. So who are you waiting for? Time for you to move forward with your 2024. And I'm grateful to God that he gave us two scriptures, amen, to, say, to encourage us to leave the things of... 2023 behind, the past hurts, the pains, and the disappointments, and the failures, leave those behind, and um, reach forward, move forward with time. Amen. Again, I say this at time, which for no one, because time is progressive, it goes forward. So we cannot be stuck in the history of the pain of the past, because things did not go well for us in 2023. Amen. Let God bring us healing in the present time, as we go forward to the future, in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. So a couple of scriptures the Lord gave to us. Philippians 3, 12 to 16, and then 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse number 1. I'll quickly read those to us, and then we start the, the, the discussions. Amen. In Philippians 3, verses 12 to 16, Paul writes to us, says, he says to us, Not that I, I have already attained, or I'm, 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 or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call. I press toward the goal I'll come back to the matter of goals in a minute. I press towards the goal for the price of the open call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us 
let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, verse 16 tells us, to the degree we have already attained, let us, by this, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. So maturity says to us, forget the pain. Forget the, of course, you learn lessons. Forget the losses of the past. You know, draw a line under them and then move forward. Paul said, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those which are behind. And that is the, the, that is the crux of this message. We must not sit in the misery of what went wrong last year. We must not sit in the pain of the past, forgetting the job today and the excitement, amen, and this, that the success of tomorrow will bring to us. So we refuse to live today because of the pain of yesterday. And so we discount today. Amen. We forget. We, even, we don't even think about tomorrow. We should be thinking about March, about April, about May. Because February is just next. We should be thinking after February. What will I be doing? The goals we have set. Oh, God. I'm going to go into goals now. Amen. The things we are believing God to do this year, 2024. You cannot have the energy or the excitement or the joy or the motivation of the spiritual to do anything when we keep looking back at what went wrong last year. So we must learn to draw a line under those things and live today, believing God for a greater and better tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. God wants us to have quality living, quality life, but it will not happen if our focus is to look back on what could have been or should have been, but was not. First Samuel chapter 16, verse number one. God, the Father himself, gives us a great example. Now the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill your home with oil. I am sending you to, to Jesse, the Bethlehemite. Amen. For I have, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. Please let me read it to you again for emphasis. Now the Lord said to Samuel, this is the Lord God himself talking to his servant Samuel the prophet. How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your home with oil and go. I am sending you to, 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 to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. Here's the story. God had picked Saul to be king of Israel. There was no election. Saul was from Benjamin. Amen. From the tribe of Benjamin, the smallest tribe. He was not the line of Judah, uh -uh, from which the king was to come. But God had picked Saul and made him and, and, and got Samuel to coronate him as king. And then, then Saul now disobeyed God, did not follow God's instruction to destroy everything about Amalek, both man and beast. So when he disobeyed God, and in, and in, 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 in his frantic uh, effort to, to try and get a, a, a Prophet Samuel to intercede for him, he had Prophet Samuel's skirt and tore his skirt, his, his clothing. And the Prophet said, <laughs> Because of what you've done, the Lord has turned the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your, your neighbor. And so it, it happened that God now rejected King Saul. And Samuel, God's servant, was mourning, mourning and, and crying and weeping. Meanwhile, God already drew a line, forgot about Saul. God moved forward to, to Jesse's house, the Bethlehem, and, and, and selected one of his sons, you know him, David, to be king in the place of Saul, even though Saul was still on the throne. God moved forward. Meanwhile, his servant, the prophet of God, was crying and mourning and weeping over Saul, who's lost the, the throne. God does not have time to waste. You and I have no time. We have no life to waste. You've got to cut the losses, draw a line under it, and then move forward with your life. That's what God did. I already rejected Saul because of he disobeyed me. I have moved forward. God did not say, I'm going forward. He says, feed your home with oil and go. I am sending you to Jason, the blessed man, for I have provided 
<laughs> myself a king among his sons. I have already got myself a new king. Why are you bothering, crying over this old one? He's finished, he's gone. Let him be. How long will you mourn for Saul? Sin I have rejected him from reign over Israel. God moved forward. As far as it's concerned, the case against Saul is closed and it's finished for sealed. He, he let him sit in the palace, not a problem. But I'm the one who, who I need my king. And I've got myself king from the sons of Jesse. He definitely might. Come go and coronate the boy. Go and put oil on his head. I've got myself a new king. He let him sit in the palace. That's his problem. That's his business. Church, it doesn't matter. You may, of course, well, you, you will say it matters because you lost money, you lost people, whatever it is you lost. But learn the lesson so that you don't repeat them. But we must move forward now. The door closed against him. The relationship fell apart. Enough of the weeping, of the mourning, enough of the pity party. Time to rise out of that misery. Step out of the misery. There's life to be lived. There's joys waiting for you. I didn't say joy. Joys in the plural. Many, many, many joy waiting for you. The joy of success. The joy of accomplishment. The joy of a new relationship. The joy of a new friendship. The joy of a new door. The joy. Uh, new testimonies are, 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 are ahead of you. But if you don't get up and rise up out of that mystery, you will not know the excitement of the new things that God will do for you in 2024. And so last Sunday, I told you we need to get up and go how. Because we know what God has said to us. Uh, 2024 for us is a year of divine expansion, meaning a year of supernatural growth, a year of divine increase, a year of, of, of strategic relocation for divine alignment, a year of divine repositioning for prophetic fulfillment, a year of divine alignment to the heavenly call. God wants you to be aligned with, with heaven so that heaven will, will download blessings upon blessings to you as you walk in step in line with the Holy Spirit in this new year and, and going forward in Jesus' name. Two things we must do, we said. We must forget the pain and we must forget the losses. It's a new year. It's a new day. It's a new season. Amen. Listen, we are going through winter right now. Very soon it's going to, it's going to change into spring, into summer. God help me. When summer comes, I start dressing, wearing woolies as though I was in winter. Uh -uh. We must get up and go forward and, and, and embrace the new season. It's a new year. Embrace the new year. Your year of divine expansion, your year of supernatural growth, your year of divine increase, your year of study relocation. God is going to relocate you out of misery, out of pain, out of losses, into what strength and joy and, and possibility and prosperity and success in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a year of divine strategic relocationing for divine alignment, a year of divine repositioning, amen, from, 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 from pain to pleasure. Hallelujah. From failure to faith in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A year of divine repository for prophetic fulfillment and a year of divine alignment. You align with God. Not staying back like Samuel, crying over the lost cause of King Saul. But you need to be able to stand up and embrace the joy of a new king, the excitement of a new coloration of a new king coming. Amen. So we said, if we are going to do these two things, sorry, what well, two things we need to do. We must forget the things that are behind us, the losses, the failures, the pain, the King Saul's of yesterday, <laughs> of, of 2023, and embrace and move forward with what God is about to do. The new king coming, the new joy coming, the new excitement, the new testimonies, the new praise report. And to do that, we said, we must do what? Set some goals, have a vision for what we believe God for the year to, to be for. A goal, a dream, a revelation, a foresight, an understanding of some sort of what you want your year to be like. Because God has said it's your divine expansion. What does that mean for you in your house, your business, your career? What does it mean for you? How does that translate to what you want God to do for you? Set some goals. Your goals, we, we did, we prayed over the goals yes, last Sunday. You know, all kinds of goals, eight categories of goals, health and fitness, family, recreation, goodwill, kingdom, church goals, spiritual development goals, your career, your finance goals. All of these areas of your life, eight areas, set goals. If it's one area or two areas, set goals. Things you are aiming to do 
and we said make your goals smart. S M A R T is an acronym meaning make it specific, make it moderate, make it achievable, make it recordable, and let your, your goals be time specific or time bound. Three weeks, a week, a month, a year, 18 months, three years. So have a vision. So your degree, three years, that's a vision, that's a goal. Your postgraduate, another year or two years if you do part time, a goal. I'll be married when I'm 25, trusting God. I will marry when I'm 30, my first child at 32. Trust God, set goals, and believe God. So, but why do we need to set goals? Let me give you five quick reasons. Number one, we set goals because God wants us to take an objective approach in our lives, to aim for something, have an objective. Objectives are the things that you want to do, you want to achieve. What is your objective of coming to school or going to school or starting that career? Your objective. Jesus had an objective to save us, to redeem us from the grip of Satan. So we have to be objective in life. Don't just get up and do things because people are doing it. Why are you? What objective answers the reason why? Why do you want to buy that house or that car? Why do you want to change your career at this time of your life? Why do you want to take that training? Objectivity is the real purpose why we do things. Let's be objective. Let me read to you Luke chapter 14. I, I have a few scriptures. I, I pray we'll finish this today, amen? <laughs> I promise you, we will finish it. Luke 14, I, I, will, be, I will be quick, amen? I won't, I won't. In Luke 14, verse 28 to 33, the Bible teaches us, uh, it says, for which of you intending to, 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 to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he, uh, he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, and all we see begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. So be objective. What That is why we set goals, what you can do. Verse 31 says, or what king going to make against another king does not see that first and consider whether he's able to, with 10,000 to, to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is still a great, way, a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all he, 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 he has cannot be my disciples. That's the Lord's speaking. So we have to be objective. Amen. The last part was Jesus Christ telling us about what we need to do to be his disciples, to be focused and they need to be objective. Number two, why we set goals? We are all goal driven or vision driven. Goal to achieve something. Everybody wants to, overall, the global state, you want to make it in life, you want to live well, be comfortable, you know, be, conv you know, be comfortable in life. That's an object, that's a goal. Every human being is goal-driven to come out of poverty into prosperity. This is an objective, it's a goal. To be able to educate their children, send them to university, it's a goal. We are all goal-driven to be a, a footballer, a basketball player. We are, we are goal to, to buy this and to buy that, to own this, to go on holiday, so and so. It's goals, goals, goals. We are all goal-driven. That is why we set goals. Amen. Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 2. Let's talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. He brings us a very good and great example. Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside the weight, and lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily snares us, and let us run with endurance the race which is that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, there was a goal before him. He endured the cross, despising the shame of the cross, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Church, I submit to you, we are driven by goals. Jesus was driven by this goal to save us, to redeem us. A new creation, all things passed away. New thing about to happen, never seen before. He was goal driven. Amen. Number three, why do we set goals? Goals set the directions for our lives. If you want to pass your, your degree exams at one at the first attempt or do well, what do you do? You apply yourself to study. 
Amen. You apply yourself. You apply if you want to write a book or or, 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 or write a play, what do you do? You apply yourself to learning and you apply to, to, to discipline. If you have to be an athlete to compete in the in the long marathons, long not the marathons, or 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 or, or, or maybe running the Olympics, what do you do? You apply yourself to training. So the direction that you take in life is dependent on the goals you've set. Nobody wants to go to the south coast and they start driving towards the north. Impossible. I want to go to where Birmingham is in the north, but I, I don't start driving to Brighton, which is in the south. Opposite directions. So goals we set to achieve, we set the direction for, for our lives. Number four, goals or visions put us put an order in our lives. Listen, where there's no vision, the people lose, they live loosely. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Where there's no vision, the people perish because they live carelessly. Because when you have a goal you want to achieve, a student wants to achieve, pass their GCSE or A-levels, or, or pass or have a degree, he sets, he puts an order. When to play, when to study, when to work. Look at us. We work. How come you're not as, asleep at 10 a.m. when you should be at work? No, 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 no. You have a goal to be at work. You're employed or you run your own business. So 9 o'clock, you're at your table, at your desk to work. So the goal you said, we put an order into your life. You don't just live anyhow. The athlete that wants to compete in the Olympics, they don't live anyhow. Number five, why do we set goals? Goals are benchmarks or standards by which achievements are measured. So you set a goal to travel from London to Birmingham. When you get there, yes, you have achieved your goal to drive to Birmingham. So goals are benchmark or standards by which, amen, we achieve our goals. Let me quickly talk about goals on paper, goals in your mind or in your head will not fulfill themselves. You have to work your goals, achieve your goals. How do we do this? I suggest five things we can do. Number one, commit your, your goals to God in prayers as a child of God. We start with prayers. We start with God. Amen. Commit your vision to God in prayers according to pray every step of the way. Listen, you cannot do much without God. We cannot. And that's why He gave us the Holy Spirit to be a helper, to help us in everything. Let me quickly share with you a few scriptures here. So we must do what? Commit our goals to God in prayer and continue to pray all the way. Job gives us a very good answer. And a great example here. In Job chapter 5, verses 8, 8 and 9. Amen. Verses, Job 5, 8 and 9. We'll read this. But as for me, I will seek God. And to God I will commit my cause. God who does great things and unsearchable. Marvelous things without number. So Job says, I, but as for me, I would seek God. To God, I will commit my cause, meaning I will commit my goals, my objectives. I will commit my vision. God who does great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. So we must start with God in prayers. Psalm 37 verse 5 says, commit your ways, your way to God, to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Father, we thank you. Isn't God good, church? Isn't God awesome? Thank you, Jehovah. Number two, to work our vision, our goals, you must gather intelligence to help you make informed decisions to achieve your goals. You want to buy a house, you don't just get up and go. Talk to estate agents. Do your research online. Which area? Where can you get a good deal for the, your budget? So gather information. Gather intelligence to help to inform whatever you will do to achieve your goals. Goals don't achieve themselves. It takes you working the goal. Amen. By work, I mean number one, pray. Commit to God in prayer. Number two, what are you doing about it? I'm going to buy a car. Which car? There are so many cars in the world now. Which car? Which size engine? What model of the car? Your budget. So you must be well informed. So gather intelligence to help you to, to make informed decisions to help you achieve your goals. Let me read to us Acts chapter 17, verses 12 to verses 10 to 12. Talking about the Berean believers. What they did. 
Amen. In Acts 17, 10, you read this in your Bibles. And the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, and, and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. What are we reading here? We're reading about the Jews in Thessalonica. When they heard the word of God from Paul and Silas, they went and searched the scriptures daily. They went and found out for themselves, confirm, gather information about what they have said, confirm. Many of us just, you hear a so-called prophet on TV, on radio, and you just believe. I was listening, you know, partially listening with my, my wife was listening to this thing on WhatsApp, the eclipse center about a prophetess somewhere in, in I won't even name the continent. Who? Oh my God. Ruined a family because of people hear all kinds of things. They just, it is, you to have the Holy Spirit. That person is to test, test every spirit. What am I saying, church? Gather intelligence. You set a goal to do this or to buy that. Please, how informed are you? Because if you are not informed, you may well make a colossal mistake that will be very detrimental. That it may take you years to recover from. Don't just believe what they say. Go and read it. Go and search it. Talk to people. You want to go into a, a career? Speak to those in the, in the career. It may already, the practitioners in that industry, Talk to them. Ask questions. Google is your friend, as they popularly say. Just do your research. Be informed. Number three, church of God. Do not let the negative experiences of other people hold you back. It's one thing I found with our community. Amen? Us. You want to start a business or start something, and you discover somebody, ah, that business, it is hard. So You hear more of people who failed than more people who succeeded. So who you talk to is also very important. So see, listen, do not let the negative experiences of other people hold you back. Except God is not in it with you. Except God says, you don't have a witness of the Holy Spirit, true peace, to say, no, don't do, don't, do not do. When God has spoken to you, yes, starting may be difficult as with everything else. But in the million ten, things will turn. And in the long term, I believe God, you will succeed in Jesus' name. In the short term, it may be difficult because you're just starting. And, I, and sometimes starting from scratch. We lead you or not, maybe from with, with your with your members of your family, a friend or two. You know, you, maybe you get some help initially. But where you are going is going to take a lot more than that. And so it may take a while to build your clientele, your client base. To be known to, 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 to advertise, to market those goods and services, you know, to promote whatever it is you are, you are doing, or to make a breakthrough or, or break even, as they say, in the business world. But ultimately, with God's help, you will get there. So Paul said, forgetting things that are behind, I press toward. So not the negative experiences of yesterday of other people, or even your own self. So don't let, let the pain of the loss of 2023 now. Now, so so direct you or so country that you're not able to even, you don't even want to try again. Amen. Except God says, don't go there, then don't go. But if God did not say, don't go there, child of God, pick yourself up. No matter, let every negative experience you hear be the one that will teach you to be better. What did they do wrong? Then don't repeat the mistakes they made. Amen. Philippians 2, 13 to 14, Paul said, I forget it. I press forward. I'm reaching forward towards the goal of the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. Number four, the point of God. Surround yourself, amen, with people of like passion or like-minded. Amen. Surround yourself, people who think possibility, we can do this. That was the problem God had with the, the 12 leaders whom he asked Moses to send to spy out the land of Canaan. Ten of them had an evil report. Only two were of like minds. 
And because of return, the majority, the entire generation have missed God. That whole generation did not make it into the promised land. It was their descendants that entered the promised land. Not the people that had the, the, the original promise. It was their descendants. Except, of course, for Joshua and Caleb. Surround yourself with people who are like-minded. Talk to, if you are in carpentry, talk to carpenters. If you're a doctor, I expect you to be talking to other doctors. If you're a preacher, I expect you to be talking to preachers by the work of the ministry. Amen. If you're a lawyer, I expect you to be talking to lawyers. Proverbs 27, verse 17, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Iron sharpens iron. You cannot sharpen an iron with a piece of wood. It won't happen. <laughs> Proverbs 11, 14, where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is what? Safety. Talk to people of like-minded, who are like-minded, or who are going in the same direction. Proverbs 24, verse 6, for by, one, for by wise counsel, you will wage your own war. And in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So talk to people in the industry. Talk to people in that field of specialism. Surround yourself with people who are like-minded, like yourself. And number five, I submit to you, seek help when you are stuck or don't know what to do. We are wired for help. Genesis 2 verse 18. God said, I will make a helper. It's not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper. So humanity, we walk on help. Nobody can do it alone. There's nothing you can do alone. Well, I beg your pardon. Nobody can do everything alone. The only thing you can do alone is maybe your work. Even in your house, you cannot do everything alone. Amen. You can't do everything alone. You be the carpenter for the furniture. You be the, the bricklayer and the painter and the decorator. You be the, come on. You can't you you be the uh, kitchen fitter. You cannot do everything alone. You call experts, those who know the bricklayers, the builders, the electricians, everybody bringing their skill, their, their, their expertise to help build you a beautiful house. Amen. You can't do it everything. Alone. Nobody. So seek help when you are stuck or don't know what to do. Genesis 2, verse 18, God said we will need help. Amen? We will always need help. Nobody can do it alone. Genesis 2, 18, and the Lord God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I will make him helper comparable to him. We will always need help. Matthew chapter 14, 29 to 31, Peter is sinking. Amen? So he said, Jesus said to him, come, in verse 29 of Matthew 14. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the, the, the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sing, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you little faith, why did you doubt? Peter wanted to walk on water. Come, Jesus said. But when he saw the challenge of the wind and the boisterosity, amen, of the wind, he was afraid. I'm beginning to sing. He cried out, Lord, save me. Church, what am I saying? Friends, what am I saying? When it's difficult, cry out to the Lord. He will save you. He will save your business, save your marriage, save your child or save your children. God is in the business of salvation. If he has to send you an angel, he will. If he has to send you people, he will. Save me, O Lord. My business is coming. Save me, O Lord. My marriage is, is on the rocks. Save me, O Lord. My child is going off, off, off tangent. Save me, O Lord. Peter cried out. Somebody, please cry out for, to, to God for your goals if it's not going well. And God will save you. So if you are going to work and actualize our goals, five things I suggest. Number one, please start with God in prayers. Commit your vision, your goals to God in prayers and continue to pray all the way. Number two, gather intelligence or information to help you make informed decisions to achieve your goals. Don't just jump or leap like that. Make sure you are well informed before you take the plunge or, or, or take the leap. Amen? Leap of faith. Number three, do not let the negative experience of other people hold you back. There will always be failures in this world. There will, in fact, more failures than successes. But please, don't let the failures of other people, and you feel your own failure, guide you to the point that you don't want to do anything anymore. 
Amen. Every, every inventor failed many times before they succeeded. Every one of them. Every one of them. Hallelujah. Surround yourself, number four, with people who are like-minded. Carpenters go in the same direction. Lawyers in the same direction. Dogs in the same direction. Preachers in the same direction. Lord, help me to surround myself with people of like, of, of, who, are, who are like me, of like passion, like-minded people. Number five, seek help when you are stuck. Don't know what to do. Peter cried out, I'm sinking, Lord, save me. Cry out to God, because we are wired for help. As I prepare the close, let me remind somebody, it's a new year, new opportunity, new season. And this new year is not just, it's, not, it's, it's based on time. 24 hours in a day. Amen. 60 seconds, a minute. 60 minutes, one hour. 24 hours in one day. Seven days in the full week. Four weeks a month. Some months, four months in a year, you have five weeks. Averagely, four and a half, four and a half weeks makes a month. Time waits for no one. It's January 21st. By this time next Sunday, has, next Sunday will be the 28th. January almost over. Be wise how you spend your time. Your time is the new year, the so-called new year. Be careful about the company you keep. You, you, you don't have time oh God, to spend on things that are, not, that are not helpful to you for the goals you want to achieve. Amen. You don't have time to spend or life to spend on things that are not going your direction. Things that want to pull you back. No place for pity party or sympathy party. But have place and time for things that will bring you joy, excitement, rejoicing, praise report, testimonies. Ephesians 5, 15 and 7 to 17. Let me, let me read it to us. Ephesians 5. Amen. Thank you, Jehovah. That will bless you. He says to us, Ephesians 5, verse 15, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Do you redeem your time? Save your time. Verse 17 says, Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Redeem your time. Save your time. Save your new year before you lose it to nothing. I'm not saying don't have time for people, don't have time to recreate, they don't have time for leisure. But make sure it's part of your drive to achieve something. It's a package. You know when to work, you know when to play, you know when to rest. Amen. You don't have time to waste on people who are not going your direction. So be careful about the company you keep. Let me read to you, Church of God, Colossians chapter 4, verse number 15. Amen. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Colossians 4, verse 5, I beg your pardon, not 15, <laughs> verse 5. Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside, redeeming the time. Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside, outside of what? Outside of your dream or your vision or your goal. You have a goal as a family to do so and so. So you don't have time to wish on people who are outside of your family. You don't need to convince everybody. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 33 says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good manners or good habits. Evil company is not good for you to where you are going. So do be careful. The company you keep this year, 2024. If they are not helpful towards achieving your goal or your dream, then please walk away from them. You won't be the first and you will certainly not be the last. As I close it, we all need to value our new year. The new opportunity that God is so graciously giving to us and to make it count. The value you place on your time will determine how people will respond to you and how they will respect your time. If you have time to respond to every social media message, people will suck your time. But if you don't have time, they will leave you alone. I make you a challenge. Don't respond to social media for two days and they will leave you alone. But the moment you say you are free, you are available, you are responding to every message, 
they will keep engaging you. They will keep engaging you. And whatever you give yourself to, we drain your time and your life. You do not have time to waste. You don't have any 2024 to waste. So do not waste your time. Do not waste your year, 2024. Work wisely and redeem your time and save your 2024 before you lose it. May God bless your new year abundantly. And my new year abundantly. May God bless our new year abundantly. And may he make 2024 count for us. And make it, make it be a year of divine expansion, a year where we shall increase supernaturally. Divine increase, supernatural growth. Amen. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May, may God help us to have substance to show at the end of the year. And indeed, 2024 has been a year where we achieved so much, so much we set out to achieve in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Church, the, the challenge for us is, is to, is, it's not about God, it's about us. He's given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. His world, his spirit. He's given us the whole earth, the whole planet. He's given us skills and abilities. He's given us mind, intelligence. It's what are we doing, what he has given to us. He's given us time. What are you going to do with your new year? I pray at the end of the year, sometime in December, you'll be able to say, this is what the Lord has empowered me, enabled me to do this year in 2024. May God grant you a bountiful year in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you richly. Church has always been a joy for me to bring you this word. I love the word. I love you. And I desire that you and I know what the mind of God is as we study his word together. May the Lord make this word to work for us in this day. May this word not stand against us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Until next Sunday, I love you. The Lord loves you even more. Keep the faith in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.